What's the word, y'all? The Chris Paul Golden State Warrior experience is going pretty good so far. And we got to say so far because, listen, we're only a, a week into the NBA season. Things are changing so rapidly. They play again today, second night of a back-to-back. -back. It might look awful. And then everything I, everything I say in this video doesn't matter, but I need to talk about this because it was the most in, one of the most intriguing things about this offseason. Real quick, I just want to remind you that it is Kenny Beach and Podcast Day. Mondays and Thursdays, we're dropping two times a week for the NBA season. And in this episode, I talked about six things that I'm overreacted to for the first week of the season. Some really good, like the team that I think is the heavy favorite to win the championship. Some really bad, like my favorite team. And, and they're, let's be nice, woes so far through the NBA season. It's available here on YouTube, but also available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Go download it, show some love. It's a completely independent project. And I'm trying to get as the, the number one basketball pod in, in America, I need your help. So if you like this video, you'll like that because it's very similar. Me, a camera, talking hoops. So go check it out. Obviously, you know they decide to trade the 23, 24-year-old Jordan Poole for the almost 40-year-old Chris Paul. And a lot of us are very curious about what it would look like. Um, when he was traded to the team, he did his press release and there was a reporter that asked him how he feels about coming off the bench. And he, he kind of made us have the assumption that he wouldn't really accept coming off the bench because he asked the reporter, are you the coach? So last night for the first time in his entire basketball playing career, 1,300 and some odd games, Chris Paul came off the bench. It's a crazy streak. It's like LeBron has come off the bench before. Chris Paul was just like, nah, never in my life until yesterday. And it looked good, y'all. It looked really, really good. Even the two games where he started looked really good. I know they started off the season by losing, but since then, it has worked. Until yesterday, at least, he was leading the league in assists per game. Oh, I'm sorry, he was second because Tyrese was leading. He was second in the league in assists per game, and the team was playing good ball when he was on the court. But when I say the experiment has worked, I want to remind you that Wardell Stephen Curry II, Jr., has been in the league for 14 seasons. 14 seasons! That's almost a decade and a half. And there has never been a time where Steph Curry goes off the court for his normal rest and the bitch, his replacement, has been good enough to just maintain whatever work Steph Curry has done. Steph Curry's on-off numbers had always been ridiculous because they've never put together a bench or a backup point guard that was just good enough to maintain. He'll come off with his first thing of rest up by five, and by the time he checks back in, they're down by six. He's like, oh, man, wh why did I just do all of that for? Well, through three games, the numbers say, right now, when Steph Curry is off the floor, they're maintaining slash getting better. Mind blown! You got to give a lot of credit to uh, Chris Paul, of course. A lot of credit to Jonathan Kaminga and all of the other players that are maintaining this. But, but this is the first time in 14 years, y'all. And yesterday versus the Houston Rockets is a perfect example of that. My notes say, when and when Steph Curry got subbed out and with 4 minutes and 10 seconds left in the first quarter, the Warriors were down by 3 points. And typically, that just means that, man, when Steph Curry checks back in, they're going to be down by 9. Not anymore. Because with 7 minutes and 42 seconds left in the second quarter when he reappeared, the, the Warriors were up by 13. That is a 16-point swing while Steph Curry is just, just resting. Yesterday, the second unit for the Golden State Warriors were the better unit. And that just doesn't happen often. It hasn't happened often in the Steph Curry era. So here are the stats from uh, pbpstats.com, a free site, by the way. When with Steph Curry's on the floor, they have a net rating of a minus 2.72. I think we can make the assumption that that's not going to maintain itself. It's going to get higher because he's Steph Curry. But when he is off the floor, the net rating is amazing. The defense has been amazing. Now, just based on the small sample size, I'm assuming those numbers are going to average each other out where Steph Curry on the court won't be a negative net rating. And when he's off the court, won't be a plus 18. But again, these are very good signs of things to come. Compared to last season when he was off the floor, they had a negative net rating, of course, a positive net rating. We can go through the entirety of Steph Curry's playing career and the sentiment will be the same because that's just the way it always has been. Even with seasons of Kevin Durant and where they can maybe stagger the minutes when Steph Curry was off the floor, the team was just not good. Just a three-game sample size, but it's looking in the right direction. The one thing that is different, though, and, I, and I'm asking Warriors fans at home how they feel about it because this is, again, not normal for them. They're usually a team that's run and gun, get out, and, and, and the pace is typically high. Actually, last season, they led the entire league in their total pace. And this year, it's, it's, it's low. 
That's one of the things about adding a Chris Paul to your team. He's a almost 40-year-old point guard that likes to take his time and is very meticulous by the way he passes the ball. So the, the pace is pretty low. I think right now it's around 19-ish. When you talk about last year, it was number one. Drop it down to 19 through the first couple games. That's a huge difference. I'm sure part of that is because we only saw Draymond Green for this one game, and he's a guy that get a rebound and push and push and push. So I'm just curious of where they land when it comes to the pace. And because of this pace and the way they play the ball, they've always been a team that has struggled with taking care of the ball. They've always been a team in the top three, or I guess bottom three, when you think about turnovers per game. And so far through this year, they've been taking care of the ball pretty good. So it's like, what do you as a team or as the person, what do you value the most? Do you want to a run and gun a little bit because that's what you know, even if that means you turn the ball over a little bit more? Or are you okay with this more lax approach to basketball where you protect the ball more, which is always a Chris Paul thing. Chris Paul's teams typically don't turn the ball over a lot, but you're sacrificing that pace that you have just been known for over the last decade or so. And that makes me think that this team throughout the course of the season is going to have a couple different identities. The one identity where you have some of the younger dudes with Steph Curry and stuff that will get to run. And then another identity that's like, let's slow it down. Let's take our time when you have Chris Paul in the game. The connection between the two, Steph Curry and Chris Paul, we saw pretty heavily in preseason. And it made me excited to watch a bunch of Warriors basketball. And that has translated well over to, to the regular season. Yesterday, when they were going against the Houston Rockets, again, uh, the, the second unit was significantly better than the first unit, but we got down to like four minutes left in the game. This was what I was deeming to be the closing lineup of the team. I was wondering what five will be on the court. And they went with their starting five. So Chris Paul is just sitting there twiddling his thumbs, and that's just one of the realities of coming off the bench. Now, once we got down to the last minute or so of the game, they took out Kevon Looney, and they went on with this new lineup of death, which I, I hate calling things lineup of death because... The actual lineup of death was just so very elite, and these other lineups don't really compare, so I kind of want to change the name, but for lack of a better term, the new lineup of death came in 10. My bad, I got my notes wrong. He didn't sub in for Looney, he subbed in for Wiggins, but at that point, it, they were already up by seven points with a minute and a half to go, so or two minutes to go, so it didn't matter too much. So actually, I wouldn't even consider this the lineup of death because Wiggins was on the bench. Um, and yeah, Steph Curry did Steph Curry things in that fourth quarter after starting off real slow. Obviously, you saw the clip of Dylan Brooks guarding him. Mean, you know, you've been keeping up. If there's one thing that kind of worries me about Chris Paul at the moment is that he has not made a three-point shot yet this season. Um, and we've seen his three-point efficiency go down and down and down with his old age. Um, his knees, I don't know if it's the knees, he's not getting enough lift. I don't know what it is. And I'm not going to be one to dissect it because he's the NBA player and I'm not. Um, but the three-point shot hasn't been there at all. And I feel like it is a very crucial part to the Warriors' identity to have people that can stretch the floor or keep the, the, the door open. Because if we get to the playoffs and Chris Paul is a negative three-point shooter at this point of his career and teams are scheming around that, it just will be more difficult for him to be an effective player. But there are a lot of times over these last three games where I see Vince's Chris Paul and and I'm like, yeah, that's my boy. That's my boy. So if you've been watching Warriors basketball so far, let me know what you think about the Chris Paul experiment. Am I overreacting to three games of the year? Maybe. We'll, maybe it will even each other out. And then now the Steph Curry thing continues to be the thing where when he's off the court, they suck. Uh, but I'm excited for it. Let me know what you think. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see y'all tomorrow.